don't press that panic button. On this week's Emily Now episode, we're going to be talking about those of you that have started a business. Now what do you do? How can you afford equipment? How can you afford inventory? How big and what type of loan should your business take out? And we're going to walk you through an example of a startup that uh, we think did it right and uh, talk about a little bit um, about some of the things that you need to know after you've started a business. So stay tuned. My name is Dylan Gallagher, founder of EmilyNow.ca. I've been a finance guy for the past 18 years, helping people and businesses get the money that they need. I work with private investors to fund good deals, all the way to banks and lenders, traditional banks, mid-market banks, private lenders. Uh, We put together this Emily Now episode on a weekly basis, and it's a series about finance with a focus on debt, and we hope that these episodes will help you learn more about what's involved in finance uh, and to navigate the issues that are specifically associated with mortgages or loans. We believe that the more you know, the better the decisions are that you can make, and better decisions mean that you can save money for the future, invest in new opportunities, or maybe give back to the community around you. Uh, We would encourage you to visit emilynow.ca to see for yourself what a mortgage or loan might look like for you or your business. Um, If you're looking for a mortgage or loan, Emily Now is an online platform that will connect you with the banks and lenders that can approve you. And uh, you can follow us on Twitter, Emily Now Canada. You can like us on Facebook. You can plus one us on Google. You can subscribe to us on YouTube. We're everywhere. And uh, we try to Uh, Make sure that we can be everywhere to give you this information because we think it's really, really, really helpful. Uh, We'd encourage you, too, if you're visiting us in the social channels, to post your questions. Um, Every week, we pick a couple of those questions to chat about, and um, they come either from the social channels or just examples that we've seen. So if you find us out there in the social world, come come and check us out interact with us. We'd love to interact with you. And uh, let's get started on this week's first question that we're going to answer, which is, how can my business get equipment and or inventory? Many businesses need equipment uh, to expand or to replace, uh, and they need inventory of a product uh, uh, or a good, if you will, to sell to their customers. So let's start with equipment loans. Equipment loans and leasing are a very popular form of borrowing. In fact, many times, the equipment manufacturers will provide leasing and or loans to a new customer that's looking to buy a piece of equipment. Other times, equipment manufacturers will simply align themselves with either a bank or lender that can provide leasing or loans uh, to their new customers. Financing equipment is much easier to do compared to used equipment. And because equipment depreciates rather so quickly, lenders are always concerned about making sure that the outstanding balance of their loan is never greater than the outstanding value of a, of a piece of equipment. And so um, if you have a new piece of equipment, banks are less concerned about that. If you have a used piece of equipment, then banks get very concerned about that. So the first thing to know about getting equipment financing is, okay, do we need new or used? Uh, because that's going to determine the type of financing and how much you pay. Financing rates for new equipment tend to be very low, very competitive, and financing rates for used equipment can be significantly higher. And to maybe give you an example, if you were to get a uh, a loan for a brand new piece of equipment for your business, you might find that the interest rate is maybe 5.5%. But you now have found a used piece of equipment, same type of equipment, but it's been used, maybe it's a few years older. You might find that the interest rate is 85 or 9% on that same piece of equipment because the bank wants to try and, and earn a return quicker before the uh, value of that, of that equipment falls. Um, your business should definitely weigh the overall cost of new versus used and understand not only the difference in what the purchase price is, because obviously new equipment simply costs more than used equipment, but also the amount of cash that you're going to have to put in. So when you buy a new piece of equipment, you may not need a lot of of cash, but you're going to end up paying a higher price versus a used piece of equipment where maybe you don't 
you don't pay a higher price f for the, the same equipment, but you also uh, have to put in more money because the bank's not going to give you as much money on a used piece of equipment as they would on a new piece of equipment. Um, inventory financing, on the other hand, is a totally different challenge. Banks and lenders do not get excited about financing inventory. Um, the type of inventory that you're seeking is very important, and I'll just give you sort of two different examples. A car lot with vehicles on it is going to, if, a, if, a, if a, someone who owned a car lot and they had an inventory of, of brand new vehicles on the uh, car lot, that's easier to get financing for than a liquor store in a neighborhood that is looking to finance the liquor uh, on the shelves. And the, the simple case for that is um, the bank would be less concerned that in the middle of the night someone would come and steal all of the cars and when the business owner woke up in the morning they would call the bank and say sorry you know I know you gave me money to buy all of these cars but they somehow just all disappeared in the middle of the night and so you know you're gonna have to come and figure out a way to get your money back so the bank is less concerned about that happening and more concerned about somebody maybe going into a liquor store stealing cases of wine or stealing um, you know, employee theft, for example, would be a very big problem in a liquor store. And so the bank would say, well, if we lent money and our to a business, to a liquor store, and our security was the liquor in the store, we are very concerned that that liquor and that inventory could find its way out of the store without us being repaid. Versus the car lot where the chances of a car driving off the lot or a whole series of cars driving off the lot and the lender not getting paid for them, the, the risk there is less. So inventory financing is very difficult to get for that reason. And even if you do need inventory uh, of some sort, cars or liquor um, or a different product or a different material that you might have, um, you're going to find that the banks, what they'll do is maybe give you 50% of what that inventory is worth, or 40% or 30%, but they, uh, they're not going to get very excited about giving you much more than that. Um, and then there's a whole bunch of reasons for that, which has to do with profit margin and your ability to pay for the inventory. But in general, some of the things to remember are um, new equipment and used equipment are going to have different financing options for them, as well as a different interest cost and a different requirement for equity. If you're looking for inventory financing, the type of inventory that you're looking to financing is very important, but you're also going to need to make sure you still have a lot of capital available because the bank isn't going to lend you all of the financing that you're looking for. If you do think you need equipment financing or inventory financing or you're looking for some leasing options, get started at emilynow.ca once you register for an account. You can go through a few steps to get yourself in what we call an Emily score. That Emily score can be used to line up with the banks and lenders in the marketplace that can that can help you find or rather can help you approve for the type of financing that you're looking for. So we'd encourage you to go there and get started. Our second question today is how big and what type of loan should I take out? Now we get you know we get through emilynow.ca we get many businesses that um, are trying to figure out, okay, um, I think I just need money. Um, you know, we're a brand new business or we're an existing business and we just need half a million dollars and we need $50,000 and we need $200,000. Uh, we hear that all of the time. And so in answering this question, I'm going to try and maybe give you a couple of steps uh, to help you identify, you know, how do you figure out um, the type of loan that you're looking for and how large it should be. So first of all, um, you need to figure out what the future cash flow of your business is, is going to look like. And, and even in saying that, some of you might have just rolled your eyes back and went, oh, okay, you know, business plan, financial forecast, I get it. I'm not really good at that stuff. But the truth of it is, even if you don't want to go to the level of a business plan or the projection of, a, of, of your cash flow, you should still be taking the time to understand how much cash your business is going to have in the future using some, some you know, easy criteria. Um, to put it in perspective, when you go to the bank to go and get a loan, banks are going to look at your last two years of history. And so many times, in particular in the last economic downturn, we heard many businesses say, well, the last two years don't really reflect what the next two years are going to look like. And that answer is okay, but you have to be able to support it. So make sure you figure out what the future of the future cash flow of your business is going to be. And then recognize that 
There are many, many, many different types of business loans. In fact, business loans are a very, very broad category. And your business will need to define the reason for needing money before you go out and look for it. So for example, here's some questions to consider. Is your business behind on its payables? Do you want to buy out a partner? Does your business need to refinance existing debt? Is your business looking to buy a competitor? Is your business looking to purchase equipment? Is your business looking to purchase real estate? Each of the answers to those questions are going to mean a different type of business loan. And so the first step, if you're trying to figure out what type of loan do you need and how much should you be asking for, the first step would be to define the reason as clearly as possible for needing, for the reason your business needs this money. Is it a strategic move? Are you looking to expand? If you're looking to expand, that's not good enough. You have to be able to articulate, well, in the course of expanding, what do you need the money for? Oh, well, we need to expand our space. Ah, okay, well, that's one type of loan. Oh, we need to expand our inventory. Okay, that's a different type of loan. Uh, we need to expand uh, the amount of equipment that we're using in our business to service the new customers we expect to get. Okay, that's a different type of loan. So make sure that you, you're, you, you very clearly define what the reason is, the specific reason is that your business needs money. And using words like expand or refinance, they're not good enough. You need to break it down specifically. And then secondly, figure out how the business is going to pay back the loan specifically. So if you say, we need the money to expand, then you need to be able to, to articulate, you know, here are the customers historically that have paid us X amount of dollars. Here are the, the new customers we're expecting to get. Uh, which is why we're asking for the money, and uh, here's the money that they're going to generate for us, and then here's how we're going to be able to pay for the debt. So it doesn't need to be an exhaustive exercise, but it has to be better than um, we need to expand, therefore we need money, bank, will you approve us? That's just not going to work. You're going to have to uh, be more specific than that in the reason and be way more specific in how you're going to pay it back. And then step three, of course, our shameless plug would be once you've figured out the reason, once you've figured out how you're going to pay it back, would be to jump on emilynow.ca and find the lender that can approve you. And I should note that once you go to emilynow.ca and register for an account, that we're, we can help you with the first two steps. We can help you clearly define the reason that you need the money and keep breaking it down until we match up with the right loan type. And then we can also help you determine how your business is going to pay for that kind of financing. So. Uh, visit emilynow.ca, get your score, and uh, hopefully that gives you a little bit of direction on how big your loan should be and the type of loan uh, that you should be looking for. And ultimately, it should be driven by the very, very, very specific reason that your business is out seeking financing. going to talk now about a, a startup business that I'm personally familiar with, but we've been watching for a few years now and have had the opportunity to help and guide. And it's uh, a pretty neat little story. It's two guys that, that a couple of years ago, they just had you know regular jobs, nine to fivers, if you will. And uh, they started working in a, on an idea for a brand new business. Um, and it was a very innovative idea, but in a very, very crowded space, which is marketing and advertising, which is you know a killer market. And uh, rarely are there new ideas in that market. But these guys sort of came up with a bit of, of an innovative twist on an existing idea. Uh, anyone else looking at their business plan would have said, whoa, for you guys to do that, you're going to need a ton of capital. Um, but what did they do? They ended up uh, finding a strategic relationship with a supplier that was able to offer them amazing terms. And without going into all the, the menu tape, Instead of going to the supplier and saying, look, can you supply us with this product? Uh, we'll pay you, you know, 30 days um, after you deliver the product to us, and then we're going to go ahead and sell it to the, to the marketplace. What they were able to do was find one key partner who had a big supply of what it was they were looking for, and they were able to structure a profit share uh, with the supplier instead of needing the cash flow to be able to pay that supplier for their product. So... Uh, many times that doesn't make sense because a profit share would be more expensive than just simply paying for the particular product that a supplier is giving to you. But in this case, it actually worked really, really well. It meant that the business didn't have to raise equity. They didn't have to find new partners to come into their firm. They simply were able to basically negotiate with their supplier and make that supplier their partner. So now that they had their supplier all locked up, they then spent half a year 
uh, working the market and found a large client that ended up signing a multi-year contract with them. And from that one big contract, they were able to leverage that success and open up other doors with, with other big clients. And because they have a long sales cycle, um, they had to kind of figure out how they're going to cash flow their business. And so being able to get into this relationship with this particular supplier was key. And then the net cash that they were making every month off of this contract, they were able to use to float their business expenses and ultimately get some more uh, clients in the door. So they now have to, you know, they've been working on transitioning from, um, you know, this being a part-time opportunity into something that's full-time, but they're past the early challenges of generating cash flow and came up with kind of a pretty neat way uh, to do it. And so you'd ask, okay, Dylan, um, founder, emilynow.ca, you have a website, talks about mortgages and loans. Uh, this success story doesn't seem to have anything to do with mortgages and loans. And the reason I shared it this week uh, was because we see many businesses, or uh, new businesses in particular, that come to us thinking that if they borrow money that all their problems are going to go away. And many times this simply is not true. Many times a business doesn't have a plan. Um, working with us, we can help them explore the money um, that might be available to them if their business had a plan. And so when customers come through emilynow.ca, either a new business or an existing business, and they're looking for financing, oftentimes it's good to know they need the money, but then we put a plan together for them to now figure out how are they actually going to be able to get the money. And so this particular story may not have much to do with mortgages and loans, but it does demonstrate that um, it's possible. It is possible that your business can figure out ways around the problems that it's having and then at the right time um, go to the bank or the lenders that <clears throat> have the financing that your business needs now to maybe get to the next step. So uh, having said that of course we would tell you to go to emilynow.ca, create an account, get your Emily score, figure out which options your business has uh, with the different types of banks or lenders that are in the marketplace. And uh, if you need help structuring your request, uh, we're real people. Uh, we get in here every day to help businesses do more. And so we'd encourage you to interact with us either through our live chat or through uh, sending us a message. There's an article we came across in the Globe and Mail. It was written by Cameron Chell of Business Instinct Group here in Calgary. It was featured in the Globe and Mail small business section. And it had some good advice that many businesses, I think, forget. And it was centered around the idea of kind of creation, innovation, and building a sustainable business. Uh, it talked about, um, you know, you should know why your business exists. And uh, kind of the two key takeaways, I think, are that it's all about customers and it's all about innovation and that kind of hard work only gets you so far, but long-term vision and creation will get you the rest of the way. When I read the article, I, I you know, immediately thought to, you know, the idea that capital obviously plays a big part of building a sustainable business, but it's not the first part. And again, this is, you know, when you look at the theme of today's Emily episode, uh, where we're talking about not hitting the panic button because you've now started a business and trying to figure out what to do. Many businesses make the mistake that I've got to go find the money first before I can go and do my thing. But the reality is that you don't need to find the money first. What you need to do is define your business first. You have to define your business. You have to figure out what the vision is. And many of that advice, you know, you've heard time and time again. You can probably look in your Twitter feed or you can go anywhere on the web and everyone's talking about planning and vision and projections and have a plan, have a goal. But you know, those things are really important and the, I, what I have found the reason for that being important is because it actually helps you figure out do I really need capital or if I needed capital maybe I need it in a different way and so as an example you know we oftentimes talk with businesses that have run into a problem or a new business that says well because we're kind of stuck in the planning and development mode we need a couple hundred thousand dollars just to float our overhead until we get that first customer but the truth of it is you need to go find the first customer, the customer first. You need to go and offer the product or the service first. You don't need to wait until everything is perfect. And to the extent that you choose to borrow the money because your business hasn't figured those things out, um, what I've seen is you immediately start from a deficit position because most times when you borrow money, you're borrowing money because you can have a degree of confidence that the future cash flow is going to be there. But if you don't have a plan, 
And if you don't have a product that you've offered to customers that you can sort of measure and figure out, how do you get any sense of confidence that the future cash flow is going to be there? And when you borrow money, many times you have to give guarantees or you have to give um, security or you have to offer up you know, your house or, or different assets or need a cosigner. But to do all of those things without knowing what the future cash flow looks like is not a very prudent business decision. And so in this particular article, Cameron talks about, you know, having being innovative and creative and trying to build a sustainable business. And I would agree. I would say that you need to do all of those things. And in the context of emilynow.ca and what we do every day, you don't want to come and borrow money or go and talk with banks or lenders unless you've done all of those things. Because in the course of doing all of those things, you oftentimes identify, okay, you know, in month number nine, we're going to need this much cash. Or when we get to this stage of our business, here's how much cash we need. And you know what? Because we've we've done this work and we can kind of see down the road that that cash would come in, then borrowing money probably does make sense. And a bank or lender would, would, would probably be interested to help you with that. But if you don't have all of that and you stand in front of a bank or a lender and you go, look, you know, we think we've got a pretty good service or, you know, we've been operating for a few years and we think we've got a pretty good service, but we haven't done a lot of work to figure out where our cash is coming from next year and the year after and the year after, then banks and lenders don't get very excited about wanting to consider your opportunity and help you out. And the truth is you shouldn't be excited about wanting to go and borrow that money. So uh, maybe it involves sitting down and taking out a piece of paper and trying to figure out where the future cash flow is coming from. And in order to figure out where your future cash flow is coming from, you might need to relook at your business. You might need to come up with maybe uh, some different ideas or you need may, might need to improve some of the products that you're offering to your customers or how you're offering them. And in the course of going through that exercise, you might stumble upon some new revenue opportunities that would make uh, borrowing money quite a bit simpler. So uh, we'd encourage you that if you think your, your new business or your existing business needs money to jump on emilynow.ca, create an account, and uh, get a score for your business. Once you've got your Emily score, you can you can match it against banks and lenders in the market that can approve you and fund you, and then you can uh, get your information over to them so they can give you a, a commitment. So thanks for joining us on this week's Emily Now episode, and we look forward to seeing you next time.